One of the most well-known days in Jesus' life is what we now call Palm Sunday. It's the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem and he was met by a cheering crowd. And before I give you like a detailed description, I'm just going to read it for you here in Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 through 11. It says, when they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpeg at the Mount of Olives, Jesus then sent two disciples telling them, go into the village ahead of you. At once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone sit, says anything to you, you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place so that what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Tell daughter Zion, see your king is coming, gentle and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, and the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt. Then they laid their clothes on them and Jesus sat down. A very large crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. Then the crowds who went ahead of them and those who followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in the uproar saying, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth and Galilee. So just to kind of help you understand this scene better, imagine it was like being at a Mardi Gras parade and everybody's yelling, everybody is excited, right? Because the floats are coming in, things are being thrown, everybody's cheering and everybody's having a great time, right? Now imagine Jesus was on one of those floats and when people saw Jesus coming in on one of those floats, or in this case, a donkey, everybody was excited because the famous Jesus was in town. They started cutting uh, uh, branches off, right? Palm branches, which is why we call it Palm Sunday, um, because palms meant victory. And so when Jesus rode in, they were excited that Jesus was going to bring them victory. So they was waving these palm branches as Jesus, as Jesus just came humble, riding on a donkey. And that's why Jesus came riding on the donkey, because he wanted everybody to know that he was coming humbly. And that's the story that we pick up with in Matthew chapter 21. After Jesus rides in in Matthew chapter 21, if you continue to read, the same people who celebrated Jesus and were excited about him coming into town were the same people who would later crucify Jesus, who would ask for his crucifixion. Now, oftentimes, and we don't like to admit this, but we often turn our back on Jesus the same way we'll read later that the crowds turn their back on Jesus. Um, but Jesus doesn't seem to do the, the same thing to us. I actually, I remember I had a friend and we got into a little scuffle and I threw a marker at him and it bust his lip. And he was so upset with me. He was so mad. He didn't want to be friends with me. He didn't want to talk to me um, for a little bit. Um, and then like maybe hours later, he came back to me. He was like, you know what? I forgive you. Don't even worry about it. And I was like shocked because it was like, friend, I just threw a mark at you. Now your lip is busted. You're bleeding. And like, you still want to be my friend. You still want to love me. Right. Um, I, I shared that story with you because that's often our relationship with Jesus. Right. Sometimes we do things that doesn't show the Lord that we love him. And we do things that um, isn't he isn't pleased with. Um, but the Lord just turns around and he shows his love for us uh, anyway. And I think this is a great story that reminds us just how much Jesus loves us. Now, that's a funny story for my life. But for Jesus, it was real. He had real friends who did more than just throw a marker at him. In fact, the scripture, I will read this passage of scripture for you. This is Matthew chapter 26, verses 14, 14 through 16. It says, Then one of the twelve disciples, the man called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand Jesus over to you? They weighed about 30 pieces of silver for him. And from that time, he started looking for a good opportunity to portray Jesus. This is a big deal because Jesus is closest friend. Again, he didn't just throw a marker at him and bust his lip, right? He literally portrayed Jesus into the hands of his enemy. And the story continues to read in Matthew chapter 27, verse 22. It says, Pilate asked Jesus, what should I do with you then? Jesus, who is called the Christ. They all answered, crucify him. Then he said, why? What has Jesus done wrong? But they kept shouting all the more, crucify him. 
When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that a riot was starting instead, he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowds and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. All the people answered, his blood is on our hands and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them after having flogged, handed him over to be crucified. Right. So this passage of scriptures tells us that Jesus was brought before the governor after his friend had betrayed him into the hands of his enemy and all the people who once celebrated Jesus for coming into town is now being ready to crucify him. Do you see how fast the story had changed? That at the beginning of the story, everybody was celebrating Jesus. And now at the end of the story, the same people days later are saying to crucify Jesus. And it all started because his friend betrayed him into the hands of his enemies. It's a crazy story, but it's also a real story. And what I love about the story most is that Jesus, every opportunity that Jesus got to forsake the people that wanted to crucify him, he just continued to love them. Jesus kept on loving the people who betrayed him, who did bad things to him. And sometimes we do bad things to uh, we do bad things that the Lord doesn't approve of. And we tend to think that because the, the bad things that we've done wrong, that the Lord would not love, love us anymore. But the truth is that this story is showing us that he continues to love us. He continues to care for us. He continues to want better for us. We just got to be willing to accept how much the Lord loves us. I want to read this last passage of scripture for you and I'm out of your way. This is Colossians chapter one, verse 13 through 14. He has rescued, he being Jesus, has rescued us from the, the, the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the son he loves. In him, we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Right. Like he loves us so much that he's willing to forgive us of all the things that we've done wrong, all the sins that we've committed. The Bible says that love keeps no record of wrong, meaning the consequences that we would initially have because of the bad things that we've done. Jesus has taken that punishment for us and he has dissolved all the consequences because he took on the consequences from himself. And why did he do it? Because he loves us and we have been redeemed by him. This is my last statement. When people failed Jesus, when they betrayed him, when they turned their backs on him, Jesus could have changed his mind. He could have given up on the whole mission to rescue us, but with Jesus, there's always one more plot twist in the works. Because when, when, when we turn away from Jesus, he does not, nor does he ever turn away from us. And that is because the love that he has for us.